Thanks, you guys, for coming. Uh, it was a great feeling last night watching some great games on TV, knowing that we were sitting there waiting to see who joins us in the Sweet 16. Uh, it's an amazing feeling. Um, credit to the, the young women in our program who got us there. Um, and now all of our focus is on LSU and just winning the first game that's in front of us. But we're excited to go to Spokane and um, really proud to be representing the Pac-12 and the West Coast in the West region. You have an initial scouting uh, uh, report on LSU, what, what you've seen from them. Yeah, um, you know, what a tough team to be able to, to move through having seven healthy players last night. Um, uh, they're really um, strong, kind of a big team, athletic. Um, Plaisance is a terrific um, player, and uh, uh, Webb is really good. She had a great game last night. But, you know, they're well coached. Any, any team that's coached by Nikki Caldwell, they're going to play hard and uh, have good defensive schemes, and it's a really good team, so we have to be ready. <laughs> right. Well, even before all the drama at the end, that's a terrific basketball team, South Florida. It's as athletic as a team as we've played. I think terrific guard play pushing the, the, the pace. And I think we had to match every ounce of intensity that they brought. And I think that's always a good lesson for you. Um, you know, down the stretch, we know we made some mistakes. We know we made it closer than maybe we, we should have. Again, I credit them for, for never giving up. But I think, we you know, we learned lessons. Um, uh, just in, in how to manage the end, end of a game, but also in our own resilience of saying, okay, didn't go the way we wanted, but we still fought back and, and got it done in the extra period. Laisha, can you speak to the, the mental toughness of this team, which I think you've seen it all year, but especially in, on, uh, on Monday to be able to come back and win an overtime <coughs> after how the regulation ended? Definitely. Um, I think, you know, we were up, but once they kind of hit that run and then we went to overtime, everyone was kind of a little bit like jolted back and kind of shot. Um, and I think that's where, like you said, mental toughness plays in. And I think if we were talking about this, I told them um, that we just have to let everything go at that point, going into overtime. Um, and I think I'd credit that to like myself, Eliza, to Talia, to kind of our senior leaders who've been here, who've kind of had um, postseason experience, who just kind of know like the mental toughness it takes. And to even Brittany Boyd coming such a long way from last year to this year. Um, and our team just really, kind of gaining that mental toughness and knowing this is what it's going to take. Um, I think that plays in from our, having our team last year to this year to playing in the second round tournament last year and just knowing what it's going to take. What kind of a, do you take any lessons away from that, Alicia? The way that that game ultimately played out? I mean, are you, are you angry at yourselves for how you played as a team or do you learn something valuable from that, that game? I think with March, you, you know, you have a split second to say you can't foul a three-point shooter. I'm angry. We shouldn't have let the game be as close as it was, but you have to let it go. I think March is about survive in advance. Um, we're off to LSU. You don't have time to worry about, you know, that game. But definitely s some small lessons of, you know, you're up 14. You want to close the team out. But like Lindsay said, they're resilient. They never gave up. So um, credit to them as well. But I think we're excited, John, about how we played as a team. I thought we played, it was one of our better games. I thought we had a really bad last minute. You know, we fouled two three-point shooters and we missed free throws. But that's all it is. I thought we played really well as a team. I thought it was huge that Rashonda Gray stepped up and hit two free throws to start the overtime. And all of a sudden, everyone relaxed and we go eight for 10 from the free throw line in overtime. I think for a sophomore to have that kind of toughness and, um, you know, Jen knocked down two in overtime. It's just what we do. So it was a rough last minute, but I think we recovered from it. Stanford got kind of a tough test from Tulsa in the first half of, of its opener, and they came back in the second half and played a really good second half and thought that gave them momentum into the second round, and they played really well. Do you, can you sense that the way you guys had to win the other night could give you guys some nice momentum uh, going to Spokane? Uh, <clears throat> sure, I am. Um, yeah, the way we played in the second half, it was – a lot of intensity from everyone and a lot of energy and um, I'm pretty sure that's going to carry over. Uh, we just have to, you know, implement that same intensity in practice and it should be good from there. <laughs> and Jennifer, is it hard for you as a team not to maybe look ahead one game? Is that uh, mm -mm. no, not, not hard ahead. at all? <laughs> that's right. The game right in front of us is yeah. the one we're focusing on. <laughs> well coached. <laughs> You guys haven't uh, faced LSU before, I'm guessing, but you have faced uh, Nikki Caldwell. What are some of, from a couple of years ago when she was at UCLA? What do you what do you know about like her and what her teams kind of like to do? 
um, just from, you know, like when in Jen, your first two years here at Cal, what you They know that their coach is going to be outdressed. <laughs> 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 I've lost the fashion battle already. They know that. I'm sure I'll hear about it all week. Uh, like Liz was saying, we know any team is that Nikki is coaching. They're well coached. I think they're really going to be defensive oriented. Um, we know they kind of play that zone. Maybe they press, but um, I think less of worried about like how she was coaching them at UCLA and more about just what's their game plan now. And after we watch film today, we'll know more about them. Can you talk about just juggling this time? I mean, got back so late. You have a couple of days here. You know, you don't have to play again. You got to practice. You got the kids. Got to get their rest. How do you deal with all that as a coach? Uh, I think we're all really excited to be to be dealing with it, um, and it's pretty simple because the schedule's laid out in front of you. Uh, yesterday was a day off. Um, you know, they, they rested. Some of them probably watched the Penn State LSU game, um, and, and we're back to a regular three-day prep today. Um, for me, you know, personally, there's there's not a lot of time to rest. It's a lot of film. It's not a lot of sleep, um, and we are thrilled as a coaching staff to be having late nights um, in late March. So, Drinking coffee for dinner? Mm -hmm. All week? <laughs> Maybe. No comment. So, a question. Do you guys use the iPads for? I, know, I don't know how many teams are doing this now, but each player has an iPad. Not yet. That's, that? It's probably on the horizon, but, uh, but not yet. In terms okay. of film? For scouting reports and all the. Okay. That's awesome. no. Yeah. No, we get, um, we get our film done. I, this team has a really high basketball IQ. I think a lot is made of their personalities and athleticism and fun and all that. But this is a team that really locks into scouting reports and understands basketball. So we, we get them done in short sections of film and just try to deliver messages, and then we get it done on the court. But that's part of our routine, just film and practice and muscle memory and all that. You know enough players can you answer that question, too, just managing this time, I mean, all the travel and getting your rest. Like, you don't have school after practice. It helps right now. But really good. How do you, how do you guys deal with that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like Lindsay was saying, we're thrilled. I think um, <laughs> you don't have time to complain about your time or this or that. Like people are sitting at home right now. There's only 16 teams left um, that have this opportunity. So at the end of the day, I think that gratitude alone kind of helps push you forward. And um, you know, we know what it's like. We we don't have any freshmen. You know, we've all experienced this playing a lot of games before. Um, like you said, a three-game prep. We know have a day off. The next day is going to be kind of light film eat, rest, water, hydrate, um, I think it's nothing new for all of us in the sense of it's another three-day turnaround, scatter report, be locked in, get it done. Did you watch the game last night for LCD? No. We'll see you eventually, right? Yeah. Some of them did. I think some of them did. You have to be able to search on ESPN3, I think, and, <laughs> and get it. But uh, they all have different routines, and I like to respect. Like, I wasn't going to have them watch it as a group. and um, So just wanted them to be able to have that time on their own. Really good that we're in spring break, so we didn't have to worry about the class. There's still a couple of steps before New Orleans is, you know, here. But is that something that this group has been striving for? I mean, I know that's sort of an obvious question, but to take that next step and you being a part of that, how much that, you know, weighs on you to get this team there? I think one of our biggest goals this year and in going to the tournament, of course, New Orleans, you know, we want to get far, but when Lindsay said it a lot, is play till someone beats us, until someone literally like shuts our team down, until someone can stop Rashawn Gray, until someone can stop Bernie Board in transition, stop my pool jumper, like stop Jim Brandon rebounding. Um, and I think when that's our goal, like everything else will kind of line up. And if it's at the Final Four, it's if it's a national championship, if it's the next round game, then you know so be it. But play until someone literally beats us. Is not this the team that? Is this the team? can do that though. I mean, you've shown how far this program has come. I think without a doubt, um, I think this is the most balanced team I've ever been on. You can't take, you know, take me away, play box and one, and you're going to have to deal with Rashawn DeGray, Jen Brandon on the boards. You can't stop one of us because we just have that many weapons, and that is our strength this year as a, as a program completely. Jennifer, do you, uh, do you think you uh, either uh, match up or exceed the re remaining teams in the athletic ability, your athleticism as a team, is that something that's a comfort that can know that that'll, uh, has carried you this far and maybe that's uh, an advantage you have as a, as a team? Um, I, my coach always says that we're one of the most athletic um, teams in the nation. And although that is true, we try not to you know, rely just on athleticism, um, but also like the veterans and 
just rebounding and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Coach, yeah, Lindsay, you, you said you didn't like the, the final minute the, of that game the other night. What, what do you actually say about, or do you need to say anything about uh, maybe not fouling a three-point shooter uh, in the act? Or, I mean, is that, is what, that little coaching points, or is it, just, is it understood by your, your players? I think what says a lot about this team, and we walked into that press conference, and the first thing Lays just said is, I know not to foul a three-point shooter. Um, you <laughs> know, I, I was just conscious of my own messages to them and it just it wasn't the time that I mean I didn't yell at anyone about fouling three point shooters. What's next? You know? They know. I think it was a, a an over anxiousness not to let somebody get off a good look against us. And I'll take a team that's over anxious before a team that's, you know, lack of intensity, obviously. Um, sure, you know, we're always gonna remind them, you know, not not to put ourselves in that position. But um, you know, in, in retrospect, um, I don't think there was a lack of the players understanding what we were trying to do. We just made, you know, a couple of errors and missed some free throws. Yeah. Lindsay, how, how often do you preach that message of let's play? Is that an everyday thing that you tell them? What? Let's play till somebody can stop. Um, that was one of our long-term goals. You know, one of the goals was win a Pac-12 championship. But we didn't set a goal of, you know, we have to get to the Final Four. We have to make the Sweet 16. I said once we get to postseason, like Lady said, you know, let, let's be playing so well and be that team that still loves each other and cares about it that someone has to stop us. And so do I talk about the long-term goal every second? No. But when I get down here and talk about the LSU scouting report, it will be, can they take away our transition? Can they take away our first option is you jumpers? Can they take away our high-low? You know, that, I think the message to the players is do what we do well. Um, and that's going to take us where we need to go. How fun is it to have a team so balanced? I mean, they're great gals, for one thing, but having so many players who can do so much. It's it's great. It's a it's a coach's dream. Um, you know, as you as you scout other teams and think about how they may play us. Um, you know. Uh, it, it's really a good feeling to have confidence in every single one of the players on your roster and that, that we bring different things and that if you try to, you know, box in one laser or take away laser, it means that there's going to be single coverage on Jen. You know, that, that kind of thing is, is a, great, um, a great thing. And I, I think more than anything, our players embrace that. They understand, you know, that, that collectively we have a lot of different parts and if they do what they do well, it's going to open it up for someone else. <laughs> let me just say this Michaela and um, Fu were already in the office and they already said well let Kai take that on how about <laughs> Kai competes on the fashion thing and I said I'll just watch film <laughs> let me let me do what I do and let, let Kai let, let Kai try to match yeah, don't change now right? <laughs> I think that, you know everyone can kind of joke Nikki has great style but she's a terrific basketball coach and um, you know, to have her team in the Sweet 16 um, is, uh, we, we respect them a lot, uh, know their staff really well, and I know that team's going to be ready.